Hey guys, my name is KSpeedy. Welcome back to Operation Save Benevento. This is episode 13, and this is also going to be the final episode in season 1 of Operation Save Benevento. We have successfully saved them, and uh, I was informed by the same guy again, Peter Lombardi, that uh, if we win this Copa Nazionale, or Copa Italia game, as I will put it for the rest of this video, we automatically quali qualify for the Europa League, but <laughs> the thing with that is, we've already qualified for the Europa League because we uh, actually we came in 6th place, which is very, very decent for this Benevento team. We only have one point currently in the Kessler uh, right now in real life. So this is going to be our team. We're only playing one game this episode, and then we're going to be doing a review on the season. So now let's get into this Copa Italia game. The League Cup game uh, up against Torino. We've lost against them previously, and we've drawn against them previously. So let's see. We can make it 1-1-1 one, one, and one with a win in the final. Torino do also have the top scorer in the competition. It's Le Lezajic. I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's Lezajic. Then I have another player on uh, four goals. Lezajic is on seven. So we're really going to have to watch their attack. So this is our strongest lineup apart from our center mid in terms of rating, obviously. This is the team that I prefer to play with. So we got Armenteros, Iamelo, Chicharetti, Cataldi, Memushaj, Hakimi, Gibson, Costa, Letizia, Lazar, and Sorrentino, or Bench, Coda, Chibza, Lombardi, D'Alessandro, Anti, Venuti, and Brignoli, who obviously scored the goal in real life to tie Benevento at their very first ever point in the Calcio A. And then this is what our reserves are looking like. The freaking bane of my existence, Belek. We got Puskas, De La Rosa, Viola, Pergini, Jimmy City, Gravelon, Di Chiriara, Canute, Malara, Giamfi, Del Pinto, Piscatelli, and Brignola. That is our final squad going into this Coppa Italia game up against Torino, so let's go and do it. Alright guys, so we have now kicked off here at Torino's home stadium. Let's see what we can do against this very strong Torino side. Maybe get a surprise win in the final. That would be extraordinary, I'll tell you that. Corner for Torino. Let's clear this one out. Get that out. Ben Gibson puts it behind for just yet another corner, this time on the opposite side. Let me clear this one out as well. Yes, Armenteros blasts that one away, and that's going to go all the way back to Unsaldi at the back. Maybe we can nick it off now. 
Alright guys, so seconds before halftime. They have a free kick. They're going to whip this one in. Unsaldi. It's a Rapse. Good tackle by Hakimi. And Andreas Costa clears that one out. And we have escaped the 0-0 result so far at halftime. If we can just nick a goal, we could play defensive for the rest of the time. Ron Cataldi. Amishage. Chicharetti. Uh, just barely keeping possession. Let's go out wide to Lazar. Back to Memishaj. Oh, that's a great pass. Back to Chicharetti, who will have a shot that's blocked. Rebound! Right at Sirigu. Still tied. Nothing really coming to any significance so far in this game. It's been a pretty boring final to say it at the at its best, really. So uh, let's let's excite this final a little bit. Memushaj out wide to Hakimi. Hakimi whipping that ball, looking for Armenteros. Yamelo keeps it. Yamelo shoot. No, should not have taken that extra touch. Should have just let that uh, go and taken a shot. We still have the ball though. Yamelo can get there, and he can. Oh, what is that defending? What is that defending? Cataldi right at Sirigu again. Full time <laughs> is upon us. Nothing has happened in this final. There's been quite a few chances. And we just gave away the ball just like that. Full time. Still have made me subs, so that's good. So we're going to take our three subs into extra time. See if we can nick a winner. Or this might go to penalties. And then it's all up to luck. Okay, still cycling the ball. Yes, there we go. That's good. Chicharetti gets shoved off the ball. Lazar wins it back, and FIFA logic says no. Final two subs coming on now. we got D'Alessandro and Lombardi. I did make a switch at the beginning of extra time. That was Chibza for Memushaz, but I guess that didn't show up. So we've used up all three of our subs now. Titsia, find that ball. Yes, Cataldi. Drive forward, Cataldi. Chipsa. Chipsa out wide. To deal Alessandro, the substitute. The shot. Siri Gu again with the save. He's been unbeatable today. Let's see if we can get a goal off the corner. Nope. That's headed away. Now they can counterattack with Bellati. And this doesn't look very good. There's Andrea Bellati. Oh, yes. Very good win. And for some reason, that's a free kick. Cataldi, look at the run of Lombardi. Come on, Cristiano Lombardi, get there. Oh, he's so weak. He's fast, but he's very weak. Niang. Oh, yes, very good by D'Alessandro. Stoppage time of extra time now. Armenteros. Out what? What was that ball by Armenteros? But we win it back through. Imelo, Imelo. To Lombardi. Lombardi, cross in. It's for Armenteros! Oh my god, no way, what a save from Sirigu, look at this ball, great header, what a save, come on, Cataldi, looking for Chicha ready, Costa on the top of the box, Christian Lombardi gonna hit one, another save from Sirigu, Okay, we have another corner. We have no time. Just go. Cataldi, open in the box. Looking for Chicharetti again. Why is Chicharetti being the target man on the corners? He's like 5'7". Oh, God. I was hoping that it didn't come to this. We're going to a penalty shootout now. All right. So it looks like Torino will be shooting first in this Coppa Italia final. Come on. Let's go, Sorrentino. Let's go, Sorrentino. Okay. He puts it right down the middle. Yamelo. Where's Yamelo gonna go? Yamelo! Yes, good penalty! Right in the bottom corner, finesse shot. Come on, Falcao, you can't get past the wall of Italy. Stefano Sorrentino. Oh my god, I went to the left, but I didn't even need to save it, because he literally just skied that. Yalessandro. Oh, come on! Right when we could have scored and put the game to bed eventually. Oh, yes, Sorrentino saves it! That is a huge save! Two penalty misses in a row for them. Chicharetti, right down the middle. Yes, good penalty, Chicharetti. Come on, we're so close. 
We are so close to winning this final. First ever trophy in Benevento's history, potentially. Oh, and Yang chips it. Okay, Taldi, come on. History in the making. No, Siri, go why? Why? We're all level again. Baron Guer. Oh, that's a good penalty. We need to score now. We need to score. Armenteros. Yes, good penalty. Not really, though. That was an awful penalty. It's a rap say. Oh, come on again. Right in the bottom corner. Okay. Cristiano Lombardi. You can do one thing for us. It's score this penalty. No! No, Lombardi! Why? Why, Lombardi? Why do you have to do that? Oh, my God. Why did he shoot it so lightly? I tried to put more power into it, but I already released the B button, so I guess that's partially my fault. Player error, I guess. Oh, my God. That, nah. We should have won that final. He definitely should have won that final. That was complete BS. Torino win the Coppa Italia. In in. Well, the only player he would say who played the good for them was their goalie, Salvatore Sirigu. He played really, really well. He had great saves in the game and good saves in the penalty shootout. So, we're going to be going home empty-handed. And Torino will be walking away with the League Cup, the Coppa Italia. Really, really disappointing. But you know what? We're only Benevento. We're not a world-class team. We're a pretty solid team considering how they are doing in real life. But you know what? I, I'm happy to get this far. And it's not like this really matters. It would have been good to add it to the trophy case, obviously. First season, first trophy with, as a manager. But uh, we already qualified for the Europa League, and you only get into the Europa League if you win this, so... Really doesn't matter. We had a long way here. We beat Roma, we beat Napoli coming up here. Torino did beat Juventus coming up here. But I think we had the much harder road. And it's disappointing to see that, but... We do only come away with a loss. And there is confirmation of that. Torino did beat us 4-3 in the penalty shootout to win the Coppa Italia. Really, really disheartening. And, uh, we just kind of have to bounce back. But, uh, in the meantime, let's go over the season. Alright, guys, so I did make a mistake during that, uh, game. I said that we finished in 6th place. I forgot that we actually finished in 5th. I was just so emotionally distraught during that game that, uh, <laughs> I forgot what we were doing that entire season, so did end up losing that Copa Italia final. But first thing we're going to do is go into my career. Played 48, 124, so we won a half our game. That's pretty good. Drawn 14 and lost 10. 74 goals for 45 against that is pretty good. Uh, youth staff, we actually never sent out a scout, even though I did get one. Didn't really think we had the money at the time. We kind of do right now. As you can see, about 1 million, well, he could get some more pre-contract player, but then we just have to offer them wages, which is not what, obviously, they're going to go for. They want signing bonuses and stuff. So, uh, yeah, finished fifth table. Let's take a look at the player stats. DeFrancesco finished uh, Calcio, uh, season with the Golden Boot, 18 goals. However, as you can see on there, Pietro Iamello is on there. One goal behind him with 17. He had a thunderous, absolutely thunderous second half to the season. Any other Benevento players on there? Chicharetti's on there with 11. And that's all. As for assists, Benevento didn't really come close. Chicharetti, Cataldi, both on 7. Armateros on 6. And that looks to be it for assists. Kelly Hon won that with 10. Clean sheets, Handanovic. Did win that very, very, <laughs> with a lot of clean sheets to say the least. 15 clean sheets. That is a ton of clean sheets. Uh, for Inter Milan, Reyna came in second with 14. See there, 
Sorrentino in fifth place with 10. Very, very good. Those the, Some of those clean sheets did carry over from Kievo Verona. Any other players? Oh, Bellic and Brignoli both on here with three games. Brignoli did get a lot less games than Bellic, so considering that he had just as many clean sheets is uh, pretty good to see that. Milinkovic Savage got the most yellow cards with eight, and then uh, a whole bunch of people got red cards. I don't know if we're actually on there. No, we're not. Okay, so that was the player stats for the season. Let's go take a look at what we did in terms of transfers. Obviously, these are the players that we do have on our radar to sign in the next season. Newest addition there is Johan Cardinal to replace the very old Stefano Sorrentino. I don't know if he's going to be retiring at the end of this season or at the end of next season. I don't know, but I might be bringing him in on a pre-contract offer. We might do that at the end of this episode. As you can see here, these are the transfers that we have completed. We signed Gibson De La Rosa and Sorrentino this season. Ben Gibson coming in for, I think it was around $9 million. Yeah, there it is, $9 million. De La Rosa came in only for 940000 His release clause we paid. Sorrentino coming in for 920000 Otzi Cup coming in on the free, uh, the free, I get, wait, what's the phrase? Coming in on a free? Yeah, that phrase. Uh, 49500 the wages, kind of not that good. Uh, well, we did get him on a pre-contract signing, as well as Pedro Henrique and Bernard, all three of those on pre-contract signings, and we could be getting another one this episode. And then Akraf Hakimi coming in here on a two-year loan, very, very decent player, one of our best players on the team right now. And uh, received offers. These are just stuff that I did reject. Chicharetti is blocked from any offers because he's the club captain. He's not going to be going anywhere. So now let's go take a look at this uh, squad hub here. Uh, overall, lowest overall of the season was Brignolo with 56 overall. Highest overall, obviously, was Amato Chicharetti. Gone up by 5. Uh, these don't really matter. Form... Yamel was in great form. Yamfi was in great form. That's a little bit weird to see. Puskas was in great form. He didn't get that much game time. Uh, Venuti was in great form. I didn't really use him. Uh, let's see who was the happiest on the team. Got Yamfi and all these other players pretty happy. Uh, Canute, Billick, and Peregini all not too happy. So now here is the important stuff. Let's take a look at our top... Uh, Appearance makers, goals, scorers, and assist makers, and clean sheet havers. As for the most assists, it is a, it is a tie between Amato Chicharetti and Andrea Costa for 42 appearances. Cataldi, Gibson, and Lazar coming in on 41, very close. As for the least appearances, it was Brignola, only on one. He was our worst player, so didn't really want to play him too much. Now, as for goals, our top goal scorer... Pietro Yamelo. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin with him. I feel like we have to bring him as well as Danilo Cataldi back into the club on permanent transfers for the next season because they were just way, way, way too good to just let go on loan deals. So top goal scorer Yamelo was Chicharetti for the majority of the season until Yamelo just broke out, started destroying everything. Armenteros on ten, and then nobody else really got close to that. Top assist makers. Chicharetti and Cataldi tied on seven. It was Cataldi for most of the time. So the fact that Chicharetti came up in an assisting role is always good to see. Armateros on six, Hakimi on five, and then Iamelo on five as well. The man who had the most clean sheets this season was Pietro Iamelo on 14. But uh, that is not what we're gonna looking at. We're looking at Stefano Sorrentino. 11 clean sheets this season in 37 appearances. Most of them weren't for us. Actually, probably about half of them were for us. The other half coming for Kievo Verona, so that is good to see. Let's take a look at attributes. These are always uh, entertaining to look at, see how your players have grown. Youngest player is tied between Brignola and De La Rosa, both 18 years old, but look at that uh, overall change difference. Oldest player is Sorrentino. There's a humongous jump. It goes from 32 in Malara to 39, so we are one of the youngest teams probably in Kessio A before Sorrentino came in. Highest rated player already we clarified was Amato Chicharetti. Lowest overall change was Malara. He went by, down by two. Sorrentino went down by one. Caravolo, who was on loan, went down by one. Uh, Memushaj went down by one. Highest grower, no one even came close to touching him. Roberto De La Rosa 
on 12 <laughs> points overall upwards. Hakimi up 6, Gibson up 5, Chicharetti up 5, Lombardi, Benucci, Puskas, all of these players growing very, very well. And then financial, none of this really matters. I guess I could just show you who's worth the most in the club is Chicharetti. Uh, most wages says Caravolo. Surprisingly, he's not even at the club. And then, as you can see here, this is the sad part. These are all of the players that are going to be leaving us in probably not too far off of a sh short few days. We got Lombardi, Puskas, Brignoli, Iamello, Venuti, Jimmy City. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. I thought I said that wrong. I don't even care at this point. Memichage, Anti, Totaldi, Lazar, and Marco Di Alessandro. We do also have two players coming back in. We have Caravolo, and we also have Cab Camparizzi. I don't know. Campari I'm going to say Camparizzi coming back in. Other than that, the longest player that's going to be staying in our club is all of these players on four years. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much going to sum up the season. We qualified for the Europa League. We did very, very well overall. And to conclude this first season, we're going to take a look at all of the trophies. So Benevento, our Benevento, finished in fifth place. 65 points, Genoa. So you know what? I guess Torino kind of took revenge on us because they didn't even get into the Champions League. So they're going to be with us in the Europa League, I believe, for next season, as they did win that cup. So Juventus won the league on 80 points, only one over Napoli. Those two were the front runners. We actually obviously managed to get Napoli to drop points, which is always pretty good to see. Uh, as for the Coppa Italia, obviously we lost on penalties. That's the game for this episode. That's the preseason tournament, which we didn't care about. Champions League is yet to be played. It's Real Madrid against Bayern Munich. Napoli also got to the semifinal, so that's good to see an Italian team in there. Roma, Napoli, uh, Juventus, no other Italian teams in there. As for the Europa League, where we were playing next season, Barcelona won. Why are Barcelona in the Europa League? I have no freaking idea. 3-0 uh, win over Real Sociedad in the final and then what's up next? The FIFA World Cup. Obviously, we didn't take any international jobs as this was an Operation Save Benevento career mode and not an Operation, I don't know, Save New Zealand career mode. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, matter, excuse me. And guys, that's pretty much going to conclude this very first season as Benevento manager. We could really be pushing for that top three next season if we get a few good signings in there. So guys, I have been K-Speedy. If you did enjoy this first season of Operation Safe Benevento, make sure to leave a like on the video, and I'll see you guys.